Patreon this week I'll be reviewing set number 75156. This set costs £9 and it's called Cracks Imperial Shuttle. This is the main build of the set and the main build of the set is Director Krennic's Imperial Shuttle. I have to say this build is great. Not only is it really massive but it does look really accurate to the movie and it's really menacing and part of that menacingness is created through the colour scheme which is entirely black but part of it is due to the size. Especially the wingspan which looks really epic. I mean look at that, that is really quite massive. And talking of the wings, they can actually fold up, so you can have them sort of out straight like this, or they can sort of fold up like this. And that looks really cool. As you saw there, the sort of cab bit opened. I'm not quite sure why that happened, but anyway, you can fold this all the way, or you can fold it all the way out, and that's really quite cool. And also, the whole top of this can open up, and you can put director Krennic inside. You can also open up this bit, although you have to open up these bits first, it's sort of a system which you have to go by. But there you can see the interior. There's two seats for the Imperial Death Troopers and one seat for Director Krennic and a little bit of extra space for accessories and other minifigs included in the set. So lots of space inside which is really quite cool. And in general this is just such a cool play set and vehicle set. All in one. And it's really quite cool. Perhaps might be my favourite Star Wars ship that they made in LEGO. Although I don't really like the ship in the movie. I mean it's a cool design but it doesn't really do much. I do quite like the Lego set, which is really quite cool. And another thing which I really like is this third fin. I mean, you can see the two wings off to the side, but there's also a third fin with some really clever and really cool building techniques. I also really like this sort of cab bit. That looks really cool and really quite sleek. And I also really like the play feature of the flick fire missiles, which sort of flick off like this. I mean, it's sort of hard to activate them, but... Once you do, they fire off. Now, they do sometimes jam, which is somewhat of a flaw with them, but overall they're quite good. And hey, if those don't work, then you can always pretend that these are firing off. And these are just two guns. There's also a ramp, which you have to unhook with your finger right around here to unload the troops and stuff. And overall, this just looks really cool and really menacing. as a really epic re rendition of this in LEGO. There is the first me for the set, and the first me for is Bodie Rook. I'd say this minifig looks really accurate to the character from the movie. I just wish there was a bit more printing. I mean, the printing that's there is really good. Like the torso print, which shows a half-open sort of jacket with a zip on it. And then he also has a sort of jumpsuit underneath that. With some crinkles and sort of lines all over that printing on the torso. And that looks really good, but the legs and the arms have no detail whatsoever. Although the face does have some nice detail, and it sort of shows a smirking and sort of eyebrow-raised expression. And the scruff sort of beard on his uh, face print looks really good as well and is really accurate to the actor from the movie and really captures their likeness really well. I also really like the alternate expression which sort of shows a sort of more competent and more concentrated version of the character and he's sort of concentrating on flying which is why he has his flying goggles on for flying a spaceship. Although you wouldn't really need goggles for flying a spaceship but it's sort of just the aesthetic of the character which is accurate to the movie. Also, I really like this sort of hairpiece, which looks really accurate to the movie as well. In general, this is a really great representation of the character from the movie, of Bodhi Rook from Rogue One. And also, there's some really nice printing on the back. I just wish there was a bit more printing on this minifig, but the printing that's there, and the minifig in general, is really quite good. So here's the second minifig of the set, and the second minifig of the set is K2SO. I'd say I really like this minifig because it's really accurate to the movie, Rogue One, and it looks really cool with all the intricate details. Such as the detail on the arm, which shows an Imperial logo on the actual arm joint. Now that's printing that I've never seen on a minifig before, and pro probably never see ever again. It looks really cool, and it's really quite cool how you got such an intricate print on such a small part of the minifig. Another really nice detail, although it's very simple, is the chest panel. I mean, it shows various buttons and sort of shiny printing. And he also has a really nice expression, which matches his character from the movie perfectly with his blank white eyes and also a small respirator on his mouth for sort of talking and breathing. He also has a light on the side, a few dents on his head, as is accurate to the movie, and the neck joint looks really cool as well. He has a stud on the back to attach stuff to him, and he has two hands which can hold on to blasters. The legs also look really cool and really tall and sort of lanky like his character does look in the movie. In general, this is a great Lego representation of K2SO. So here's the third Mayfield set, and I don't think this character actually appeared in the movie, or at least they didn't appear for that long. So it's quite cool to get such an obscure Star Wars character, 
and this character is Pal. I'd say this is a really good representation of that character, or at least I think so, since I didn't really see them in the movie, but they do look really cool, and a really unique sort of character. I mean, there's lots of really nice printing on it also, especially the jacket, which has all sorts of straps and sort of an unflapped bit, and a belt, and sort of bulletproof look to it as well. And there's also a radio, I think, attached to his back and also onto his torso. And he has a long rifle and some really nice dual-wielding legs. Now, I still wish that they were printed a bit better since they do sort of look a different colour to the actual hip pieces, but still quite nice detail right there to show the sort of garment going all the way down the entire minifig. He also has a really nice leg colour, or sort of a trouser colour, I guess, for the printing on the legs. And it also shows some sort of ripples off the trousers themselves. And also around the back he has a sort of radio, as I pointed out earlier. And that radio is quite a nice detail. Also, he does have quite a nice headpiece, which is sort of a bit of cloth wrapped around him. As you can see here, he also has a really nice alternate expression, where he's sort of yelling and you can see his teeth and his tongue. And that'll be really useful for all sorts of customs of people yelling. And that's a really cool face print. Also, he has some nice details sort of, of smudging and sort of different skin colours all around his face. And some wrinkles as well, so I guess he's sort of old. And you can also take the radio off his back, and you can see a rest of the detail from the torso going around to the back. And there's sort of a line going through one arm to the sort of torso to the other arm, so that's quite cool. There's also a sort of belt going around to the back. And some various sort of details on the back as well. Some straps and some other details as well. In general, this is just a really well detailed mefig, a really obscure Star Wars character. It's done really well. I also really like the other expression, although this one's a lot more expressive. This one's cool too. He sort of looks a bit grumpy, and it's basically the exact same expression, only the actual expression of it is slightly different. Who is the fourth Mephi of the set? And the fourth Mephi of the set is Director Krennic. I'd say this is a really well detailed Mephi. I mean, the details are very simple yet very effective. He has the sort of general sort of Imperial officer or general sort of look to him. And he has a belt with a shiny printing on it. And he also has some sort of ranking system on his torso. Also various creases on his torso to show the creases of his actual uniform. His legs are unfortunately unprinted black legs which are very common and not very useful or well detailed. His arms are plain white arms, but you don't need to get printing on arms anyway, so that's fine since it matches the torso. His hands are uh, plain black hands, and those sort of show his black gloves. And he has a silver pistol, which I've never got one of these before. It's a really nice piece, and I shall just show you it right here. And as you can see, it sort of shines in various places, and it looks really cool. I mean, I wish I had some paint apps on it, but overall it does look really cool. It's nice to get a variance on the Star Wars blasters, since they usually only come in black, and in only three sizes. Now, another detail which I really do quite like about this minifig is the cape, since it's a fabric cape, and those are really quite nice and don't crinkle up, and look really good. I think with this colour of this cape, it is an exclusive version of the cape for Director Krennic, so that's quite a nice detail there. And also his hair is very accurate to the movie, and it's sort of the comb over hair piece in a light nougat colour, I think. Or perhaps dark nougat. I don't know. But uh, he also has his face print, which looks very stern and accurate to the movie. And portrays the actor very well. He has some jaw lines and sort of a raised eyebrow. And he looks sort of smug and very stern. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a back face print. But that's okay, since this minifig does look overall very good. Although the character wasn't that good, this minifig is very good the 5th and 6th movie of the set, and these are both Death Troopers, and I'd say these look really cool. And the design from the movie is captured really well here, it's really accurate to how the movie design looks, and I'm really happy with that since the movie design looks really cool, and it's translated really well here in Mafic scale. Now, the details which I really like about this Mafic are the helmet, which looks really well with really nice printing on it, it has two green lights, which are iconic to the look of the Death Troopers, and sort of black eyes, which are blacked out. Some metallic printing on the nose, which looks quite good. Some printing around the side, which is quite good. And there's also printing along the top, which shows a line going all the way along. And they also have a moulded on scope. So in general, the helmet looks really good, and matches with the figure really well as well. The torso print is really nice as well, and I prefer the helmet print, but the torso print is quite good as well, and very accurate to the movie. It shows some gas canisters, or grenades, or smoke grenades, or something like that attached onto a belt, and there's also some armor detailing and a 
shiny strap printed on as well. There's a belt printed on to the hip piece. And there's also some printing for some knee pads. One is different from the other, which is quite nice. It's sort of an asymmetrical design. He also has a pistol, and there's also a rifle for the L1 included in the set. And there's also a sort of uh, pontoon on the side of the minifig, which has some lines going down it. And there's some really nice printing on the back as well, which sort of shows some various detailing for the suit. And some armour detailing as well. In general, this minifig is really well detailed, lots of printing, and perhaps it's my favourite Star Wars minifig ever. Right, so overall this is a pretty great set, the build is epic, and the minifigs are really cool as well. I really like the amount of minifigs, and the amount of stuff that you get in the set, and the great build that there is, is really quite cool. I'd probably give this set a 8 out of 10, and that's it for this review. If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you later, alligator.